The Jersey Shore rock and roll scene, made famous by Bruce Springsteen and Southside Johnny and the Jukes, now has an honorary museum featuring memorabilia about the musicians who made it happen. It is, of course, the world fame of Bruce Springsteen that has paved the way for the existence of the Asbury Park Rock and Roll Museum. That fame has also provided the media blitz send-off for the relatively tiny Palace Amusement attraction. But the grand opening last night did not smack of the born in the USA Bruce Bravura that set the world on fire, but rather of reunion. And while Bruce is the quintessential good old boy, the old boys that inhabit his haunting musical tales have felt a sense of being lost in the shuffle. You get the feeling like, thank God they remember. And uh, it makes me feel real good. And uh, it's good for everybody with, the, with Billy and Steve are doing, for all the musicians to let, know, to let people out there know there's a lot of talent in this area. Steve Schrager and Vinny Lopez have been drumming in the Asbury circuit all of their lives. And yes, their experience includes playing for Springsteen. I say you always know you're a dinosaur when you end up in a museum. And what do you think about that? <laughs> I think it's okay. I like it. It's bringing back some of the old guys that uh, have stayed away, with, away from music for a while. They're coming back. They, they've renewed their interest in it. All the, all the local artists are, are very pleased with the way it came out. They, they sort of feel honored to, to be included on the walls with, with the big names. And uh, we want to give them their moment in the sun. Steve Bumball and Billy Smith are the two devout fans that put it all together. And while their focus was originally to be on Springsteen, the museum has evolved as a tribute to the entire scene, a move that just may be preferable to the man in question. Now, what about Bruce Springsteen? What about his response to all of this? So far, we've gotten nothing back from Bruce. We've attempted to contact him both through the management and personally, and through friends. Uh, we've gotten no response. Uh, he's not as easy to get a hold of as he used to be, obviously. It's tough for him to go out. Uh, but we're still hoping that he'll come down and check it out and uh, give us the benefit of the doubt and hopefully give a stamp of approval and uh, let everybody know that he thinks it's a good idea and that we did it tastefully. Bruce, he, you know, he's, I think... I don't know what he would think about this, I just don't know, because he was never one for hoopla anyway, you know. But the museum's a good thing for the people, like, just the old guys, like I said. We all enjoy it. While the boss hasn't given his A-OK, -okay, the city's boss, Mayor Frank Fiorentino, is tickled with the attention Asbury's favorite boy is bringing home, especially in light of the city's $500 million effort to rebuild. The thing that amazes me more than anything else is the fact that uh, when it first came to being, the idea, uh, it was picked up by all of the newspapers, the Daily News and the New York Times and USA Today. And these are the kind of things I think Asbury Park needs. It needs good publicity. The opening reception was followed by an all-out jam at the now-famous Stone Pony. <laughs> 